Now, let us understand the mechanism or the processes which are involved in the formation of urine. We are going to see a broader picture that what are the basic processes if we have to divide the entire process of urine formation into three parts, what would be the processes? So, how does it take place? You know that the site of the formation of urine in, is present inside the kidney and that happens to be nephron. From your understanding of structure of nephron, you know that, that there is a renal corpuscle which is present. Inside the renal corpuscle, there is the tuft of capillaries known as glomerulus and uh, which is surrounded by the nephron's uh, Bowman capsule. Now, from your knowledge of nephron structure, what happens is, first of all, you know that this nephron, if we have to represent it in a simplest way, it looks like this. This is not the structure of nephron though, but if we have to represent it in the simplest possible way, it would be like this something like this, right? Hairpin structure, then we have again the digital convoluted tubule and connected to the collecting duct. This is what is the simplest presentation of representation of a uh, nephron. This is Bowman's capsule. This is entire, this entire part is a tube like structure. This tube and this is lined by squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, I am sorry. The cuboidal epithelium which has the ability to secrete as well as absorb. So, this is the cuboidal epithelium lined tubule just for your uh, understanding I am telling you that the cuboidal epithelium because it is uh, able to secrete and absorb that is why we have these tubular parts made up of that epithelium. Now as the name suggests uh, that cuboidal epithelium and as I am suggesting towards a very obvious thing that over here the absorption and secretion of some substances would take place. So, for the absorption to take place, something has to enter these tubules and from where does that enter? It enters through the tuft of capillaries that is known as glomerulus. Glomerulus brings the blood to the Bowman's capsule. In the renal corpuscle, we have a term known as podocytes. Okay, what are podocytes? You know that the, this part is also exchange part. So, this will have a very thin epithelium of the capillaries again the same way that thin epithelium of capillaries would be present suppose this is the capillary all right the thin epithelium of capillaries it is in contact with the basement membrane which is again non-cellular and then there is the epithelium of the Bowman's capsule and over here these capillaries are in close contact and they form filtration slits known as podocytes because the uh, capillaries are highly folded and glomerular membrane is also highly folded they come in contact like this okay and the filtration slits are being formed through which the blood which comes in capillaries is filtered directly into the Bowman's capsule and the filtration rate is as much as 180 liters per day. So, 180 liter of the blood comes over here more than that in fact it comes over here and almost 180 liters of the blood is put into the nephrons but you know the urine that is being secreted it is lesser than 1.5 liters it is not more than 2 liters per day a human uh, excretes uh, only 1 to 2 liters urine per day while the filtration happens to be 180 liter that means maximum of the reabsorption has to take place inside the nephrons so the first point of the mechanism of urine formation is the glomerular filtration which is also known as ultra filtration which takes place in the malpighian body or the renal corpuscle where the glomerulus the tuft of capillaries which is bringing the blood through podocyte throws in the secretions into the Bowman's capsule from where they enter into proximal convoluted tubule then to loop of henlate moves on then to uh, the this is the descending this is the ascending limb then comes the distal convoluted tubule from where it is thrown into the collecting duct and many collecting ducts they join 
and throw their secretion into the ureters from where they can be stored in the urinary bladder. So what we are going to deal with is there are three parts of the mechanism of urine formation inside a nephron. First of all, maximum of the blood contents would be thrown into the Bowman's capsule except for the cells RBCs which are present inside the cell almost entire of the plasma it gets inside the PCT and proteins of course they will not be able to move into the plasma proteins which are present they will not be able to escape out from the filtration slits into the Bowman's capsule so the maximum water content and few dissolved ions and minerals they are thrown into the uh, Bowman's capsule by the process of glomerular filtration. Now, as I told you, the cell walls or the cells lining the PCT and DCT, they are of cuboidal epithelium. So, the tubular reabsorption takes place. In the case of tubular reabsorption, we have two types of reabsorptions which would take place. One would be passive absorption, another would be active absorption. So, elements and products like sodium, glucose, some amino acids, they would be taken up actively. And what Water which is going through this part in the beginning it would be taken up passively. So the maximum of the absorption has to take place inside PCT and the loop of Henle. So whatever was thrown inside over here it would be taken back into the interstitial cells of the medulla or the cortex. Interstitial cells would take them back and apart from that we know that in nephrons there is a capillary process which is going on that is known as vasa recta which is responsible for concentration of urine. We would deal with that in counter current mechanism but for once the urine enters the PCT it here it is the reabsorption which takes place reabsorption of many ions and substances which need to be taken up such as glucose amino acid sodium and other ions which are bicarbonate ions which are to be taken back and for maintaining the ionic balance the tubular secretions also take place the tubular secretions are such so that whatever the ionic gradient is being created it has to be balanced by giving up while something is being taken up from the glomerular filtrate that was result of glomerular filtration some of it has to go back and that going back is known as secretion which is given by again the cuboidal cells epithelial cells the giving is in the form of uh, uh, protons and ammonium ions so that there is a gradient which is being maintained the absorption of water that is reabsorption of water takes place in the loop of Henle and the reabsorption of sodium chloride it takes place over in the ascending loop of uh, loop of Henle, ascending limb of loop of Henle. Apart from these the nitrogenous wastes are also at times reabsorbed and they are reabsorbed in the distal convoluted tubule. Again the epithelium plays an important role and whatever is left behind that is very less of the content because maximum of the water is being taken out of the glomerular filtrate that would be thrown into the collecting ducts and that would form the urine in the end. So this is the entire mechanism of urine formation what you have to remember is that there are three steps which takes place first of all the blood comes to the malpighian body which has glomerulus and bowman's capsule the glomerulus is the tuft of capillaries maximum of the blood content is thrown into the bowman's capsule and pct with the help of podocytes and that process is known as ultrafiltration when this ultrafiltration has taken place then comes the mechanism of reabsorption and concentration of urine so we have tubular reabsorption which takes place in PCT and DCT and there is secretion apart from the reabsorption which is also uh, taking place so that the ionic gradients are taken good care of so that is all about what happens inside a nephron how the entire blood which is having the nitrogenous waste will be able to get rid of it with the agency of the nephrons thank you